Okay guys, we're here in the carrier editor. So this will be a walkthrough on basically what you can do and I'll just run through it fairly quick here. Uh, you can click on these tabs here to bring up the multiple areas that you can edit. So body, voice, and styles. You can edit the name, their body, which is these two blocks their voice and their style. So let's go ahead and change that. Okay. Uh, the gender option here, that really won't do much. Um, the male female will only make a difference if you if you plan on going into the in-game editor. It will need to match the location. So since she's in Tira spot, her gender has to be female, otherwise it'll glitch out and you'll spiral around endlessly. However, if you're using a one-player slash two-player model original character, like you went in there and created a one-player character, their gender will need to be this. Otherwise you will revert, I'm pretty sure you'll revert back to a simple or a default character creation. Um, so just be aware of that. You can change the base body, so you can make her built. You can change their body proportions, give them lots of muscle, make her boobs really big. Um, so let's make let's make Tira really fat with big jugs, stomach, and waist. Okay, so now she'll be really fat. And you've got the height option right here. Since Tira doesn't match any of these, she's a little different from all of the female heights. Uh, she automatically goes to custom height. If you modify this at all, she will look kind of wonky. It's best to go through the preset heights or automatically match style used, because that will automatically make them the exact height of the original character who has that style. So she would be as tall as her right now, but if I go to Ivy, she'll be tall like Ivy. However, if I were to select well, Aeon, he's really tall, but he's also a guy. Since the female body is rendered slightly smaller, it makes her slightly like broader in the shoulders, so it'll look like her armpits are gaping wide. So you got to be aware of the automatically matched or just selecting these as well, the male styles for a female render. It'll do that too. Um, but yeah, so let's go through custom height. These percents above it you can see will change when you go up and down. Those percents are based off of the standard male 3 custom height. So the lower body is the exact same as well as the head. So the female head and the lower body, for Tira anyways, are the exact same as the male custom. However, her upper body is 7% smaller. Uh, her overall height is 3% smaller and her hand is 7% smaller. And her shoulders are 49% smaller. So there will be a pretty noticeable difference if you go to male height 3 with the shoulder breadth or breadth. So beware of that. And also, as you can see right here, if the height's too drastic, the match online matches will lag out after 40 seconds of the game has passed. And the reason for that is, on their end, they're seeing a standard height. So the games aren't matching up on both sides, so it lags out once it realizes that something's up. And it'll lag out sooner if one of you dies. So say you kill them before the 40 seconds is up, it'll lag out pretty quick there because it's trying to go to the next match on your screen, but on their screen they're still fighting you, so it's really weird. Um, and to keep the game as balanced as possible, I won't let the power mods be done right now because it would really suck if someone figured out how to make them work online because uh, you can kill people in like three hits and that's not fun for fighting that person. Uh, the preset heights 
will match their styles or the power will be the default and actually all other heights like if you match the style every single character has the default height 3 power so even though like Tira she's a little shorter I think her recommended height is 3 but uh, Viola. Viola's height 1 or 2, but she actually has a height 3 power. So, you know, just think about that. The custom height percentages, like I said, are based off of the male height 3. So changes will be proportionate to that. This is the equipment editor, which I'll actually run through. It'll have a tutorial all of its own, and that'll be the next video. It's just simply because there is a lot to cover in this and I don't want to leave anything out. So we'll actually just leave that aside. The colors here, as you can see, the default Tira only has the two undergarments previously colored, as well as her skin, her undergarments, which are the default panties that she wears if she were to be naked. Uh, her hair, it's got all three colors, her eyebrow, and as you can see, the standard cast, you cannot color their eyes. It's a part of their face, and anything to the, anything to the eyes won't change. So, you know, beware of that. And street color here, the only thing you can do in the editor is enable it, because the street color coding is ridiculous, as you can see here. There's not a pattern that I could see, so at least for right now. I don't think it's going to come up, but it might when I get bored of doing nothing. So, you know, there's that. And you can enable the box and select a color. So now that will be green if she's wearing equipment there. Oh, that's good. All right. We'll just disable that like this. Like I said, there's a couple bugs here. Apparently the headgear doesn't want to disable like that, but everything else should work just fine. Okay, and patterns, stickers, face paints, you can enable that, select your design here, let's make her a rainbow, which is modern 12, and we want it to apply as a pattern. If I were to apply it as a sticker, it would be as you see, it would be a square of rainbow. So, you know, you can experiment with that and see what you like. Um, the rotate value right now is stupid, so they won't rotate, but I'll try something with that. Uh, the affected, so that's where it's going to color. So since it's set to skin, all of her skin will be rainbow, except her face. I don't know why, but the face is different. So you have to do one on the face as well if you want that rainbow to go on her face. Um, you can do it on her eyebrows, on her iris, which if you don't know is the color of her eye, the undergarments, the sclera, which if you don't know is the whites of your eye, the hair block one, two, or three, but beware, all changes to hair, actual hair, will not go through. So for Tira, none of these will work because all three blocks are for hair. Um, however, Pira or Natsu, they're one player hairs, they've got ornaments on their hair, like Natsu has the jewels and the flower, or the feathers, and Pira has the metal piece with the bow coming out of it. Those are blo colored blocks two and three. Those will be able to be patterned. Um, and they don't let you color Pira's in-game, which is stupid because they actually have the color blocks affect it. They just don't want it to show up in-game. Um, so yeah, color block two is for the metal part. Color block three is for the ribbon, and the gold in the ribbon is stuck. But so as you can see, you can put it on the costumes. So you can have a rainbow Astaroth two-player type situations. So always a rainbow robot. Um, all sorts of fun stuff you can do with that. Uh, face paints don't actually have to go on your face. They can go on your clothes if you want them to. So you could have this weird sumo. Uh, geisha looking stuff on your shirt if you want it to. Uh, so yeah, you can 
make lots of fun stuff that they didn't let you do in game. And motifs, they can also go on the one player custom or costumes, whatever. So there is lots of fun stuff that they just didn't want to let you do, but you can. Um, the axis flip, size, origin, that's going to be like where it would start. So if you want it to originate at the head, these I believe will be proportionate to that. Um, so you know, beware of that. Uh, vertical and horizontal movement, and the color. Got to or you got to enable it before clicking will do anything. See, like it wasn't enabled. But now if I go to enable and click a color. That would be the color. And since that pattern or that motif only has one color, I'm pretty sure, just the black, it'll only read this color. So these colors will be in there, but they won't show. Um, so yeah, let's. She won't be wearing a costume. Let's put that. Let's not. We'll just cancel changes. Um, undergarments. With all coloring, um, not in patterns, but all of this coloring in this area, if it's disabled and you're actually wearing an equipment, like if I put a mask on her and I don't have this colored at all, it'll be the default color. So with hair, you can have more than one hairstyle. You can have more than one of every equipment, um, every type. So if she has, say, Tira's hair and Pira's hair, um, if I have this block here disabled, Tira's hair will be its, its default white, and Pira's hair will be its default blonde. But then since these are colored, um, Tira's uh, highlights in her hair will be the colors as indicated, and Pira's ornament on the side, the metal part will be purple, and the ribbon will be this blue as opposed to the default blue. Um, unless the default blue is that blue. I'm not positive. Um, but yeah, so there's lots of fun stuff you can do with that. So you can mess around with that. I don't think I said anything here, but you've got voices. Tears gloomy. You know, you can do that. But other than that, it's just the default cast voices and the custom indicated by the M and the name. And I did that because, like, Veteran Knight, they've got for both, and Superhuman, they've got for both. Um, and let's see, the style red, the purpose of that is to build points towards Mimic characters, because if you don't have that selected, um, if they didn't have this, when you were using Edge Master, it would be building points for if you're using Aeon that battle, that battle, it'll be building po a point for an Aeon win or style used as opposed to an Edge Master. So when you have Edge Master selected for a character, you'll be using all of the styles and you'll be using the weapon, uh, the Master. Um, but it'll be building up points in your style percentage for Edge Master. Um, Ivy. No matter what style you use here, it'll be building points for Ivy. So you can do whatever with that. Let's make her Tira, Tira, and we'll give her her hidden Soul Calibur. Every character, their final weapon is the Soul Calibur, or the, the Master, in-game. However, certain characters will have hidden weapons, and those will be seen after the Master. Um, so Tira has Soul Calibur and a colorable Icerne Drossel. Icerne Drossel, however you say that. Uh, Aeon has a colorable Tintos and Anthropos. Whatever. Alpha Patroclus just has a colorable one player Soul Calibur. Uh, Ivy has got Soul Calibur and a Valentine. Algol has got. Oh, Algol's last one is Awakening, but he's also got a rainbow one where the aura underneath your feet will change colors. However, that will only show up if you're in location Algol. 
So they've got to be in Elgil's spot to get that aura, otherwise it won't show up. Um, and that brings me to location. The location is where you would go to select the character when you're starting a fight. So if you're in training and you want to select the character you're editing right now, you would have to go to, like if I select Dampier, I would have to go and select Dampier. So if you don't have the Dampier DLC, you don't want a character in the Dampier slot. You can still use Dampier style, it's in the game, but if it's in Dampier slot, you won't be able to select it. So put it in cre created characters, in Aeon, Algol, whatever. You'll be able to use Dampier style. So whatever, we'll put her back in Tira by just scrolling through there. The hit pack is just the different uh, hit effects. So the little comic, whatever. I don't like those, so I always keep it at standard, but whatever floats your boat there. Uh, so let's move on to the equipment. So see the next video for a pretty lengthy guide on that. It'll be, but yeah.